subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So we are considering a signal Fn. Suppose uh, okay, so we are considering a discrete time signal which has values of sample as follows. Now this arrow represents the value of uh, the signal at n is equal to 0. So now we are going to look at the various operations that we can perform. The first operation that we are going to look at is time shifting. Now see what happens in time shifting is we are adding or subtracting some uh, constant to this n. That is that is what we have done in continuous time signals also right. Uh, so suppose I am uh, I am willing to find f n plus 2. Now we know that when we are adding to the signal is going to shift left there right. This is left shift or or time advancing right this function is going to advance in time or shift left. Now what happens to the representation of the signal ok graphically we can perform this right graphically we are just going to uh, shift all the values to left by 2. Now what happens to the representation see the values of the samples are going to remain the same only these values are not going to change. What is going to change is this marker, this marker is going to change why because previously this was the value of the signal at n is equal to 0 but now since the signal has shifted to left by 2 units each value is going to shift left. This value which was occurring previously at n is equal to 0 is now going to occur at n is equal to minus 2 because the function has shifted to left. Now what value is going to occur at n is equal to 0? This value which was previously occurring at n is equal to 2 is now going to occur at n is equal to 0. So this f of n plus 2 is going to right and where is this marker going to be? This is going to lie at 5. Why? Because the function shifted to left by 2 units the function shifted to left. So value which was previously occurring at n is equal to 2 is now going to occur at n is equal to 0. So this is how f of n plus 2 is going to look like. Right? Similarly if I am going to perform right shift or time delay suppose I am willing to find f of n plus 3 what is going to happen values are going to remain same then also right values are going to remain same values of the sample is going to be same just this marker is going to shift. See if you are performing left shift marker is going to shift to right. If I am performing this right shift marker is going to shift to left. So values are going to remain same. Previously this was the value of the function at n is equal to 0. Now since the complete function shifted to right by 3 units. So this is minus 3. Since the complete function shifted to right by 3 units, this value which previously occurred at n is equal to 0 is now going to be the value at n is equal to 3. And which value is going to occur at n is equal to 0? This value 3, 3 units left from here. Okay, 3 units left. So where are we going to put the marker? This is going to be at minus 2. This is now where the function is going to begin. Right? So this is how we are performing time shifting operations in uh, discrete time signals. Okay, Time shifting is easy, you just just uh, shifting all the values, all the samples to left or right. Now what happens in time scaling is, see when we were performing time scaling in uh, continuous time signals, we got time instances like 5 by 2 plus 5 by 2 minus 5 by 2, 3 by 2 which was acceptable in continuous time signals. But now when you are going to perform time scaling in this discrete time signal, sometimes you are going to get values like 1 by 2 to uh, 3 by 2 which is not acceptable for discrete time signals. We need only integral values. So what happens when you time scale a signal? 
either decimation or interpolation is going to happen. What does decimation means? If you are compressing a signal, if you are time compressing a signal, you are going to lose some samples. Why lose some samples? Because when you are, uh, suppose I just compress this signal. Now this sample, okay, uh, just talking about this signal. So this was the value at n is equal to 0. This is going to remain as it is, right? Because if you, even if you compress the signal by a factor of 2, this is going to remain as it is. This was the value at n is equal to 1. Now when you compress this signal, this value is going to lie at n is equal to 1 by 2, which is not acceptable, which is not allowed in discrete time signal. So what do we do? We just cancel this sample, okay? We just delete this sample. We cannot retain this sample, which is known as decimation. We are going to retain only a few samples, maybe half, maybe one third. Why? Because integral values are only allowed in discrete time signal. So whenever we are going to compress a signal, sample are going to be decimated or deleted or lost okay so in time scaling we are going to lose some samples and in case of expansion if you are going to time expand a signal what happens is see this uh, sample was occurring at n is equal to 1 now it is going to occur at n is equal to 2 but this sample is going to occur at n is equal to 0 only so we have to pad some extra zeros we have to insert some extra zeros in order to fill the gaps, we are going to have samples only for few numbers, right? Suppose uh, here we are having how many samples? We are having 7 samples. If I time expand the signal by a factor of 2, I am going to need 14 samples. Now I have only 7 samples. So what do I do? There are uh, several ways to do. Most commonly used is padding zeros. Whatever values of n, I am not having any information, any samples. I am just going to append some zeros there. Okay, so uh, let us look at time scaling. So we look at, so we are considering the same example only. So I am uh, looking at time compression first. Now see, what do I have to do if I am multiplying any uh, this n with any constant value to, what I am going to do is, what happens is, divide all n values by 2 going to divide all n values by 2 now see n is equal to 0 is going to remain as it is so this is going to be same right now this sample which occurred at n is equal to 1 is now trying to occur at n is equal to 1 by 2 but this is not allowed in discrete time signal so i am just ignoring this sample okay this this is lost now this was previously at n is equal to 2 when you divide by 2 it's going to occur at n is equal to 1 so the next sample is going to be 5 this was occurring at n is equal to 3 now this is going to occur at n is equal to 3 by 2 not allowed fine so this is how two samples are lost now uh, come to the negative side this was occurring at n is equal to minus 1 minus 1 by 2 is not allowed so lost this was occurring at minus 2, now going to occur at minus 1. See, previously I had 7 samples of this signal. Now, when I time scaled this signal, when I performed time compression, only 3 samples are left. All the other samples have been lost. This is known as decimation. Decimation. Right, when you are going to compress a signal in a time domain, you are going to lose some samples. This is known as decimation. Now, if I perform reverse, that is if I try to expand a signal, if I try to find f of n by 2, what happens? Now, you are going to multiply all the n values by 2, right? We have discussed this in time uh, operations already. So when I multiply all the values by 2, this sample which was occurring at n is equal to minus 3 is going to occur at minus 6. This sample is going to occur at minus 4. I am just leaving a space for samples at minus 5. Again this sample which was occurring at minus 1 is going to occur at minus 2. These are uh, unknown values, so I am leaving space for them. The sample which occurred at 0 is going to occur at 0 only. Likewise, uh, on the positive side also, just writing quickly. 
okay I have left spaces for all the missing samples now see what happened when I expanded the signal in time what happened is I need to find out values of samples at these values also but I could not obtain these samples from the original signal why because the signal was not existing at minus 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2 initially but now I am required to find the values of this uh, signal at minus 1 minus 3 minus 5 1 3 5 now there are two three ways of doing this most commonly ways uh, that we using is zero padding that is whatever this values are whatever va missing values I am just going to put zero in their place okay padding zeros now we also using sometimes we also using Newton Raphson method or sometimes we are finding average average of the adjacent uh, values adjacent samples so sometimes we are using average Newton Raphson RK method zero padding these are some ways that we are using so most commonly uses this zero padding so this is known as interpolation interpolation when you are padding some extra zeros just to complete the signals in case of time expansion that is known as interpolation so in case of time scaling either decimation or interpolation is going to happen see interpolation is not harmful for us because we are not losing the samples right we are retaining all the original samples other than that we are uh, either you are padding zeros you are taking average that does not matter but what happens in decimation is you are losing some samples if I want to recover the signal it is not possible I cannot reverse this process okay this time compression is not reversible this time expansion is still reversible because I have retained all the original samples so whenever we are performing time scaling uh, we are going to uh, face some loss okay next we are going to see time reversal okay so the last operation that we are going to look at is time reversal so already we know that what happens in time reversal is the function the signal is going to flip signal is going to form mirror image about y axis right it is just going to flip so uh, similarly in discrete time signals also if this is fn and i am supposed to find f of minus n what happens is all these values are going to flip this this sample at n is equal to 0 is going to remain the same and all the other samples are going to exchange that is this sample which previously occurred at n is equal to 3 is now going to be the sample at n is equal to minus 3 so what I have to do is I just have to reverse the order of the samples so uh, this is what my signal is going to look like so this is what is going to happen in time reversal we just going to add an extra negative sign to each of the sample each of the uh, n value where the sample was occurring so this is what is happening in time reversal uh, so we are taking a small question uh, to sum up this lecture in the next lecture we look at some basic discrete time signals